do the My Horse University in Extension Horse Quest live webcast on health concerns for the overweight horse. Our presenter this evening is Dr. Colleen Brady. Dr. Brady is an Extension faculty member at Purdue University, providing leadership for the 4-H Animal Sciences Program, and she is a member of the department's Life Science Education Team that works toward developing innovative and effective programming for youth in formal and informal education areas. Colleen focuses her research on measuring increases in science competency in youth due to participation in animal science-based programming, <clears throat> as well as exploring motivating factors impacting youth decisions to participate in these programs. Colleen received her bachelor's degree, master's, and PhD from Michigan State University in the Animal Science Department, with an emphasis on horse management and also reproductive physiology. In her spare time, Colleen rides her horse Chester in primarily dressage events, and she also cooks and enjoys gardening. Uh, please note that during the, the webcast today, you're going to be able to ask questions during the, the talk here via the text chat on the left side of your screen. And uh, we'll also have a uh, question facilitator today. It's Dr. Christine Skelly um, from Michigan State University. So she will help answer your questions uh, throughout the presentation, and there'll be time at the end for questions as well. Uh, the presentation today will be recorded and uploaded to our website if you'd like to review it at a later date. And at this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dr. Brady. Uh, thanks, Gwen, and thank you, everyone, uh, for being here uh, today or this evening. Um, and as we go through uh, this presentation, we'll have uh, several um, questions, uh, polls that we'll ask you to participate in, and I'm going to go ahead and ask you too to use the chat box um, a little bit to provide some information. Um, please do feel free to, to jump in with questions uh, at any time. I think it always makes any presentation more interesting uh, when we do it more two-way. Um, and actually, I want to start with asking uh, where everybody is from. Are we all living with the cold right now or are some of you uh, from warmer places so if you can go ahead and in the chat box indicate uh, what state you come from Michigan it is cold it's, it's pretty cold down here in Indiana too I'm actually oh Pam we can we all come stay with you I bet you probably have the best weather of anyone um, so we are going to talk uh, primarily about um, overweight horses, but um, any time, of course, when we talk about maintaining weights in general, we want to think about maintaining an opt optimal weight uh, in our horse. And that optimal weight may vary a little bit, and we're not going to get into the depth um, at this particular webinar about uh, what we're looking at for uh, young horses and addressing young horses in particular. Um, we're going to be more focused on uh, the mature horse. And guess what I think of as what most of us own is that kind of maintenance type horse that we ride a few times um, a week and, and maybe a little bit less here in the winter time um, as it gets colder and that's one reason we wanted to time this presentation uh, at this time um, because for a lot of us uh, we spend a little less time exercising our horses when it's 20 degrees out uh, than we did in the summer. So why is this really important? Well, just like in humans, and I'm sure you've all heard everything about uh, the risks of weight gain, um, obesity, those types of issues in humans, those issues are actually equally critical to our horse. And when we start thinking about how do we uh, maintain and provide the maximum health and well-being of our horse. People generally um, get concerned about well-being issues when they see the horse that's too thin. Um, I don't know how many people have driven down the road and you know you look you look across the field and you see a horse standing out there that has the rough coat and you can see some of its ribs and maybe a little bit of its spine and you know we're concerned about those. Um, if you look at most breed associations, uh, most uh, organizations that oversee horse shows, uh, more and more of them are having rules and regulations about uh, horses cannot be too thin. Um, if a horse is below a certain body condition score, maybe it cannot be exhibited. But a lot of times we don't think about uh, too fat um, as being a health issue, um, which I always find a little ironic that 
uh, in humans, we're so concerned about people being overweight and don't seem to think there's too many health concerns with being too skinny and we do the reverse with our animals um, because this is actually an issue not only with horses but also in um, cats and dogs quite often that that people don't really know what that optimal weight is and, and they'll tend to keep their animal too heavy um, instead of too thin and it's actually uh, much more likely to occur and even in some of the horses that we think of as being extremely well cared for and maybe with a high degree of well-being, um, some again, some of our show horses, that maybe are kept a little fatter than is actually uh, in their best health interest. So basically, what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about some of the major health issues um, that face overweight horses. We're going to talk uh, about some tools um, to assess uh, the fitness of your horse relative to his weight. Is he close to his optimal weight and then we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, we manage uh, these horses that that maybe are um, a little heavier than they need to be. So some of the health issues uh, that become a concern um, and actually I think Gwen did we have a poll here about whether people thought their horses were overweight underweight about the same or if they had a combination yeah I'm sorry I don't know how to I don't know how to do the polls. So how about if each of you kind of indicate so we have a little, have a little bit of an idea of, of where we are. Um, I think we just had a poll come up and you get to choose. Um, how would you describe most of your horses? And I'm really interested to see how many have the sum of each because when we talk about management, especially if you're managing horses in group situations, um, sometimes we'll end up with situations where we have, yeah, well, they don't all kind of sit in the same spot. We have a few that are a little heavy, a few that maybe aren't quite where I want them, and a couple that are that are just right. So um, that's really common, and we'll talk about some management strategies uh, to handle that. And just like it looks like in this group, too, we have some – uh, some of each. I know at the at the barn where I ride, we definitely are in that some of each uh, category. Oh, I don't think I have the authority to change that. So what kinds of issues do we have? Um, and actually, just this is another question for the chat box. How do most of you use your horses? Um, are you primarily a pleasure rider? Uh, do you show? Um, do you do racing? Uh, high level competition? Um, and I guess when I say that, I mean like high intensity, eventing, raining, um, some of those sorts of things. Um, because one place that we do see uh, these overweight horses start to have problems relative to their health is actually um, re reduced ability to perform, um, to do the job that they need to do. Um, and you'll, as we go through these, think, wow, that kind of sounds familiar maybe. Um, exercise intolerance is a big one. Uh, as they get heavier, um, it's more difficult for them to exercise and, and runs into, again, um, maybe like some of, like, like I know I personally deal with, uh, is it, it gets, you know, I don't want to exercise because it gets to be harder work. Um, and and uh, leg and joint pain um, and discomfort, again, from bearing that extra weight um, that they don't need to. We're going to spend a fair amount of time actually talking about something called equine metabolic syndrome. Um, and this is something if you want more information on or if it sounds like it might fit some of your horses, I really encourage you to go to the uh, e-extension horse quest website um, and there's actually a whole learning lesson about equine metabolic syndrome. And I believe, and um, either Gwen or Dr. Skelly will know for sure, there might actually be an archived webinar also. Um, on equine metabolic syndrome. But this is one of the kinds of things that as these horses get uh, overweight, uh, get heavy, that, that we can see happen. Um, and it's kind of a combination of things that happen with equine metal metabolic syndrome. You have horses that are insulin resistant. They are more prone to laminitis. Oh, so Wayne, yep, your horse was diagnosed as insulin resistant in June. Um, they're more prone to laminitis and founder. Um, and they're obese, or maybe ha if they're not obese in general, they'll have uh, spots, regional adiposity, um, which means in different places they will get um, fat deposits that aren't really, really normal and may not even be normally distributed. 
So uh, I found this little jumping pony on uh, Google. Um, so what do we have? When, what kinds of re reduced performance capability do you do if these horses are overweight? Um, definitely a lack of stamina. We talked about increased trauma, increased stress on the joints. They might be intolerant of exercise. And this could be especially an issue when um, we have a situation where maybe these horses aren't ridden a lot. And so then somebody, you decide, oh, but it's a gorgeous weekend. We're going to all load up together and we're going to haul to the closest national park and then we're going to go for a trail ride. Um, and it may not seem like it's a tremendous amount of, of work and a lot of exercise when you're mostly just walking and maybe uh, trotting around a little bit, but if you have a horse that's that's very overweight, that's that's not in good phys physical condition, um, that really can stress their joints. And sometimes what you run into is these horses that actually get really have trouble maintaining their keeping their body temperature. They get hot, they get sweaty, and because of that extra layer of fat, they cannot um, cool themselves off enough. And then of course, like I said, we're not going to focus on underweight horses, but similar. Uh, issues, of course, stamina, anytime that you are taxing the horse um, beyond what it can do physically, um, you're going to have some issues with stamina and may lack the muscle to perform. So just to, like I said, a little bit more about the EMS, um, the insulin resistance, uh, history or current or laminitis and this obesity is how they determine if this horse may have EMS. How many of you have an easy keeper? Those horses that it seems like uh, if they breathe, um, all they need is air to keep going. Oh, yeah. And you know the ones, too, that when the grass gets lush, you have to bring them in. And they get a little sore-footed every once in a while because maybe um, they got to a little bit... Uh, they got to a, a little bit uh, too much rich grass, and so they may get just a touch of that laminitis or a touch of that founder. Um, and so these are the horses that are the most likely to have challenges with uh, equine metabolic syndrome. Um, insulin resistance, what is that all about? Um, it's similar to kind of a pre-diabetic state, and basically what happens is the body resists the insulin signal to uptake energy, so more and more insulin is produced by the body. So that's probably when Wayne had his horse tested. Um, my guess is you maybe they took a blood test and looked at how much insulin he had. Yeah, and it said, oh, and feeding him is no fun. And it looks like there might also be for risks for EMS, um, and it can lead to laminitis. Only grass hay, yep. Um, laminitis founder uh, caused by GI upset or other disease, uh, lush pasture, overeating. Is everybody pretty familiar with laminitis, or do we need to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, what laminitis is? We can end up with some uh, fairly significant damage in mild cases, you'll have horses that uh, recover f fully, um, and again, some of these easy keepers, you'll see just a maybe a touch of sore footedness um, that might be from some laminitis, and then when we get their uh, body sugars down again, uh, they're, they're okay. Um, in severe cases, uh, you actually can have long-term damage or even situations where the horse uh, needs to be... Um, the horse needs to be euthanized. So Wayne's waiting for the damaged hoof, which happens, this is just kind of a picture of what's going on inside the foot. Uh, when they get that laminitis and they get all this, if you can see my pointer, where they get all this inflammation, it actually pushes the coffin bone down. And so you'll have some damage sometimes on the hoof wall. And so I think that's what Wayne is waiting for, is for that damaged hoof wall uh, to grow to grow out. Um, how do we prevent laminitis? I um, mean, again, these are some of the same things we look at with these uh, overweight horses. Uh, no sudden changes in diets. Uh, limit access to green pasture. Um, we, we try to keep our horses turned out as much as we can. I think a lot of us do because it's so good for the health of the horse. But you really need to, to think about limiting, especially in the springtime, um, access to pasture. And even if you're going to turn them out and you have some of these sensitive horses, um, to wait until later in the day. Don't let them out early in the morning. Let them out later in the day. Um, it actually decreases some of the sugars in the grass. Uh, limit the amount of concentrate. I think it was Laura that mentioned, yeah, your pony gets only grass hay and, he's, and she still is hard to keep 
um, down where you need her to be. Um, most horses that are on maintenance um, really can do quite well on just a good quality hay. Uh, one pounder case and one overweight. Oh my goodness. No carrots, no apples. Yep, lock up your feed. Um, chronically overweight horses, like we've been talking about, are definitely more prone. Um, so again, what if my horse has EMS, or if you suspect that your horse might have EMS? Uh, really, this is something you need to work with your veterinarian about. Um, they're going to talk to you about um, reducing the carbohydrates, uh, reducing the sugars from the diet. Um, as you can see on Wayne's note, uh, no carrots, no apples. Um, there's sugars in those, and so they have to try to decrease uh, the sugars uh, in those. Um, if they have those touches of laminitis, again, you don't want to exercise them, even though you're trying to control their weight. Uh, you need to wait until uh, the hoof is healed and the inside of the foot is healed. And so your veterinarian is definitely your best guide uh, for working with your individual case. So how do you, can you tell if your horse is at risk? Uh, for EMS, and the obesity is a big part of that, or how can I even tell if my horse is obese? Um, one way to tell is by actually weighing your horse. Uh, see how much your horse weighs. How many of you have access to a scale um, at your farm where you can weigh your horse? I'm expecting zero because hardly ever is that an option. Um, I'm actually going to show you an app here in a few minutes. Um, yep, with the weight tapes. And people try weight tapes, and weight tapes, um, they, can, they can help you tell if your horse is actually kind of getting bigger or getting smaller, uh, but there are a lot of challenges with weight tapes. So I'm going to actually show you an app um, during this presentation that will help you uh, estimate the actual weight of your horse much more effectively. And then body condition scoring. I know Laura, I think it was, made a comment um, about knowing where her horses are body conditioned at. How many of you are familiar with body condition, sc condition scoring? Yep, sort of. Okay, so we're going to kind of, and this is really important. And one thing that's really important, and I think that all body condition scoring is, which is real, which um, I think we need to keep track of when we think about it as a, a way to assess well-being in horses is that really all we're looking at is how much fat is on the horse's body. Body condition scoring does not give us an assessment of overall health. Um, so in the context of overweight horses, in the context of how do we manage that, it's an extremely useful tool. Um, but body condition score in and of itself um, is not a absolute in terms of overall health, an estimate of overall health. Uh, for mo most horses, our target is between a four and a half and a five and a half. Um, we need to think about level of physical fitness and how that actually might impact, because again, we're looking at uh, fat cover. So you can have a horse that's actually in excellent health that has a relatively low um, we're maybe on the low end of that range for body condition, and I think of that kind of like um, a lot of our elite athletes, our Olympic athletes, our gymnasts, you know, you're not going to say they're not healthy and physically fit, but they don't have much body cover fat. Um, in general, um, if you're in that range between above a 3 and below a 7, uh, the horse is going to be healthy, um, and it's when you get beyond those two points that you really start having um, some, some concerns. And this picture, the purpose of this is just to show, again, the effect of, of fitness is that on the, on the right here, this kind of looks like it might be a Cremello, um, is, is thin, um, thinner than we'd like to see. Um, and a lot of times people look at the ribs and decide, oh my gosh, I can see the horse's ribs, it must not be fit. Uh, the horse on the left, um, if any of you are about my age, uh, is a mare named Ruffian, who I've always just thought she was cool, from... Uh, the 70s, and just as a super, super fit, fit racehorse, a lot of times, especially around the ribs and the neck will get, will get thin. So really important to remember the effect of fitness um, when we look at this. Well, so one thing um, I really wanted to share with you in this conversation was actually a new app um, that will be available by the first of the year. Uh, it's actually really, really close right now. And we're going to show that actually allows you to body condition score, help you body condition score your horse, 
and keeps track of, um, gives you a record of how your horse's body condition is increasing or decreasing over time. And so now this is my big test to see if I do this right. I need to stop sharing this. You're going to see a white screen for a minute while I flip over to actually show you uh, the app. So while we're doing this, if anybody has any questions um, to this point, please do to do put them in the in the box and and Dr. Skelly or, Skelly or I will do your, our best to answer. Oh, that came up faster than I thought. So what we have here um, is actually the front page. I'm sorry about all those little extra notes you're getting of our new app. And just to let you know that right now while we're on this screen, um, I cannot see the chat box. Let's see if I reduce that. I still I put this in the, see if I can rearrange these things so I can still tell if you're asking questions. Yes, the yellow is the, actually, yep, the purpose of this is to kind of start giving you an idea. Uh, uh, this is an app that you can learn how to body condition score. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, it sounds like most of you are. Oh, I don't know why that's not pulling down. Uh, you can read through here. And it'll teach you. And then it goes into a, a learn area where you can actually start and we break the horse up by parts and the places you're going to want to look at, like we saw in that first image. And you can actually go through and say, OK, let's see. No, that one doesn't look like my horse. Uh, let's see if it's a number two. Let's see if it's a number three at the ribs. And, and look at the different, uh, the different areas. It has a description of what's in each place. Um, and then again, as you click through, if I look at a seven, okay, on their neck, they're getting a little heavier, getting a, a little thicker, where the base of the neck joins the shoulder. Um, you can see that they're getting um, on their on the back that they are uh, starting to get a crease in their back where their spine is actually lower uh, than the muscles. A friend of mine likes to tell a story about a pony he had back when he was in 4-H that they could put the shampoo in the little crease in his back would hold enough shampoo to, to wash the whole pony. Um, and then as you get up into these horses that are, are starting to really get into an issue uh, where their w may, weight may become a health issue, uh, this chestnut mare here, or sorrel mare, um, is an 8. And this is actually the same mare. Uh, that was out in the field, and when she came in, um, she was a nine. And so uh, this eight is actually her after a few weeks on her um, weight reduction plan. So the thing, since most of you are pretty familiar with body condition scoring, that I really want to show you here is, yeah, when they get that fat too, that's a good point, because they lose their withers. Because you get over the top of the withers here, and when they lay all that fat down there, uh, the withers actually don't hold the saddle in place very well. So um, what I think is unique about this app is not only can you go into the, the learn section and learn about the animal, but you can actually then put your own horse in. Um, so I just have a couple that are preloaded here. Uh, so I can say, OK, my horse's name, this is actually my horse. His name is Chester. And you can go to each body part and say, uh, let's see, well, I think of the loin. Oh, I think he was maybe a four. And then when I went to the ribs, well, I couldn't see his ribs even when he turned. So I'll say he was a five there. Um, and the tail head, oh, he gets a little extra fat there. But he's really lean at the base of his neck or at his, across his wither. So I'll give him a four. And you can kind of go through, and then it'll calculate a score um, for your horse. And then if you do the horse more than once, it actually keeps a record. So here I've put Chester in here a couple different times. Um, so on December 17th, and not, this is not something you would do every day, um, but we just came out with this, so we haven't um, had a chance to do it numerous times. So. Um, so there's Chester on the 17th, and there's Chester on the 16th. Clearly, the likelihood of one being a 7 in the rib cage and a 3 in the loin is not very realistic, but I, again, I was just kind of playing around with it. 
And then, once we're done with Chester, you can look at any other horses you might have. So I'm going to back out of this now and show you, um, that's the computer version. It's actually avail going to be available um, either for Androids or, uh -oh. oh no, Gwen, I think I just deleted it, the video. I think I hit clear instead of play. Should I just play it off my computer? Okay, so she's going to re-upload. Oops. Yep, Gwen needs to take over the controls because Colleen was talking and not paying attention to what she was clicking on. And so what she's going to re-upload is the same app, but I'm actually going to show uh, the full functionality that it has on um, the iPad or on a phone uh, where you can actually take a picture of your own horse and then you do the scoring on your own horse and that's what it records. Uh, so whereas the learn function uh, that you just saw has the bay horse with the yellow on it and as you change and put in different horses um, it you just look at the same horse. When you actually use the app itself it lets you uh, keep track of the horses um, and includes in the picture uh, the name of the horse, the date, and depending on the tool you're using. Um, I used my iPad out at our barn and it, my iPad is not the one, I don't have the data package so it could not GPS it stamp it, but if you use a phone that has, or, or a device that has that capacity, it can actually uh, g put a GPS stamp on it. Okay, thank you very much, Gwen. You're a lifesaver. So, now we just, so I just cancel this thing, I think. So, kind of as you, I don't know if I have control. Do I have control again now? Just click the start button, okay. So basically this is just my iPad. Um, and to kind of show as you want to add a horse. So I decided we're going to add a horse named Sally. Um, and so it will come up, oh, I should pause it there. Let me back up a little bit. What comes up, as soon as you put a new, ho a, a new horse in, is it actually has the camera, make sure I pause it here at the right spot, there pause, so you can see this little camera pops up, so this is how you can actually put your own your own horse in there, so once you add a new horse the camera pops up, you select that, I couldn't set the camera up at the barn so Sally gets to be the model horse that I've had forever, and then you can actually select whether you want to use that photo. Let me stop it for a second while I explain. If you want to use that photo or if you want to retake the photo. Um, if for whatever, whatever reason you didn't like that picture. Um, up here in the top um, act is a, a button. The e-extension button takes you to the e-extension learning lesson on body condition scoring. So if you need a refresher on how to do it, uh, it'll actually take you directly to that place. As soon as you put in the horse's name, it automatically populates the date, uh, so you don't have to worry about doing that. And so then you just go through that process and say, okay, this is how I want to score each part of the horse. And it gives you your total, you click done. And uh, you have a record of Sally's body condition score. You could pick a different horse. So this is Harvey. And you can say, oh, now as long as it's the same day, you can actually go in and change. So you could go out, take a bunch of pictures of your horses, then come into the, where it's warm and actually sit down and say, okay, well, I, I pretty much know what I want to do with them. And of course, this picture is too far away. This is actually an older thoroughbred gelding um, that spends all his time. He's the reverse of some of the horses we're talking about. He spends all his free time with his head in the feeder, and it's still hard to keep weight on him. 
This is my handsome little gentleman. This is Chester. If you think you know what breed he is, tell me, because we have no idea. Like I said, we got him at a horse rescue, um, and he was every place he was listed for sale, he was listed as a different breed. So that's kind of how this app works. And again, you can put in as many different horses as you want, and it keeps a record. And you can actually go back to the learn section while you're in the middle of scoring an, a horse and say, okay, wait a second, I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to decide what I, uh, how I want to... Um, this, you know, pick which number is most appropriate uh, for his tail head. So now I'm going to look and see the different descriptions. Um, and it is really important, although this app uh, shows the visuals to help you body condition score, that mo you have to absolutely put your hands on them um, if you're going to be able to score them so that you can feel them. You can't tell just by standing across uh, the field um, how much fat they really have on them. You have to be able to manipulate it and and feel them. So uh, this is kind of what, what this app looks like and we think it'll be really useful for people uh, to help to help manage their manage their horses. And I think we're gonna stop with this because I don't think there's anything else on here that's that useful. It's just kind of showing you a little bit more of how it goes around and what a handsome chap Mr. Chester is. So now I go here. I'm going to hit the right button this time, Gwen, so you won't have to... Right, Wayne, good point. And that's where the, t the, the hands are, the, the putting your hands on them is so important, and especially in the wintertime. Uh, when we have these horses that get a lot of hair on them, um, that you need to, the, the tool can help you keep track and help you keep a record. Um, but in order to accurately body condition score, and that's why if you go back to those links that Gwen and Dr. Skelly provided, they actually go through teaching you and showing you how that you have to put your hand on the horse. You cannot body condition score a horse just by looking at it. Uh, the pictures help us to show differences. Uh, but if you truly want to, to score your horse, you have to touch them. And even more so um, in the wintertime when they get so, so furry. Um, my horse happens to get to work all year round, uh, so he gets to be uh, trace clipped in, this, in the wintertime, uh, which does make it a whole lot easier to watch his weight. But for both the fat horses and the thin horses, it can be really, really difficult um, to do that in the wintertime because uh, that hair can can hide a lot. So what do you do if you determine that your horse is overweight and you need to do something about it? Um, and it's so easy for people to say, well, that's easy. Just feed them less and exercise more. Uh, well, that's not as easy as it might, it might sound. And especially with some of these horses that might have some other health issues also, uh, because you can't just uh, feed them anything. You might have to be very careful, like some of you already referred to, with your horses uh, that you have now that you have to feed particular things. Um, in general, if you go with a uh, grass forage, um, it, first of all, you want to go high forage. And your diet, your ration for your horse should always be um, higher in forage uh, than it is in concentrate. And much as some of these horses may tell you that they absolutely cannot survive if they do not have concentrate. The reality is they can. Um, look for forages that are primarily a grass forage. Yep, we're going to talk about that, Wayne. We're going to talk about whey in the feed. Um, no sweet feed. Uh, good old-fashioned oats um, works really well in, in some cases. Um, we're going to talk about feeding one and a half to two percent of their body weight, uh, and and then I'm going to show you another app that will help you more accurately estimate that weight than the weight tapes that we already talked to you about. Um, weigh the feed, um, any feed, uh, and your hay can be highly variable, um, especially if you're purchasing your hay. Uh, it, there can be a lot of variation from one load to the next of uh, the, the quality of the hay and the amount of nutrition in the hay. Uh, I used to work for a horse trainer that um, 
every time we got a fresh load of hay, after about two weeks of feeding that, uh, we would go through the barn and we would pull the blanket off every horse and we would assess uh, the weight, uh, the body condition of each, each and every horse. And, of, and you have to give a little time for that uh, for it to have its effect. Um, exercise, again, just like with people that are trying to control their weight, if the horse is been in a situation where they have get they get no exercise, then you need to gradually introduce an exercise program, and that may start with hand walking, um, lunging, or riding. It's really important that, to know that not just turnout in and of itself is not really an exercise program. Um, a lot of our horses uh, will just uh, not not exercise themselves. They will. I know one of our challenges again with in this in the winter time with the big round bale feeders is that the horses go out and they walk from the gate to the round bale feeder that is the duration of their exercise then they turn around then they stand there with their head in the feeder until um until it's time to come in and so they eat the entire time so it needs to be exercised that is purposeful exercise uh not just uh, not just turnout if we're trying to really help them reduce uh, that weight. So what is this Healthy as a Horse app um, that helps you calculate your weight? Um, several of you have commented about weight tapes and the challenges with weight tapes and, and this uh, app was actually developed um, and it is currently available through iTunes. Um, was developed at the University of Minnesota by some, some researchers there um, and one of the unique things that this app does is it actually starts with saying we know all horses are not built the same, uh, that there are differences, and that those differences are going to impact uh, how these measurements affect um, what their actual weight is. And so the first thing you can do with this app is actually select what type of horse uh, you have. And these have the major uh, light types of horses. Now, draft horses are not um, included in this particular application, but uh, you select which horse type um, you have, and then from there, and this is about body type. This isn't about uh, particularly being concerned about what breed it is. Uh, so like for my horse, I would actually probably pick stock type because um, that's more of his body type. He's more like a quarter horse thoroughbred appendix kind of body type. Um, and then he is a saddle type uh, type of horse. So then the next thing you do, um, and this is where a lot of those weight tapes also have inch measurements, so that's where, this is where you can still use your weight tape, is actually measure the horse. Um, the height uh, to the withers, um, the circumference, um, of their girth, so that would be right where you put the saddle. Um, and each of those little eyes gives you a little bit more information on how how to do the measurement. Uh, the body length, um, and this it's really important with the body length. It is from the point of the shoulder to the point of the buttock, um, straight back. Uh, not to thanks, Dr. Skelly just posted the link um, that you can get directly to this app. Uh, you don't go around to the middle of the body. Um, it's more like kind of, I think it would like measuring for a blanket a little bit. Um, and then the neck circumference. And where you do that is basically just halfway down the neck. And then um, you simply tell it to calculate. And it will uh, give you an estimated body weight for this horse. And where this horse fits um, in terms of the percentile of horses of its approximate uh, of its, of its approximate same size and structure. Um, and again, this can be super helpful when we're looking at a situation where we're wanting to control intake and control feed. Instead of just throwing a flake of hay, um, you weigh the hay and you see how much am I actually feeding it. Um, am I feeding it what, portion control, I guess, is what it, what it amounts to is portion control um, for, for our horses. Also really useful for um, medications and uh, when we're deworming 
um, those sorts of things. Most of those things are done by weight. And I, I think most of us, and I'm, I'm one of those two, kind of, we guess. We kind of look at our horse, we look at the tube, and we say, well, you know, we think this is about how much dewormer they need. Um, so this kind of an, an app will be really useful um, in helping us uh, keep an eye not just on the body condition score, which gives us that idea of how much fat, um, but also it helps us give us an estimate of weight that we can really use to effectively make sure uh, that we're, we're feeding them the right amount. So as we get kind of towards the end of our time here, um, just some uh, general recommendations. Um, really important that we combine exercise and nutrition to optimize uh, this weight um, and to accurately know how much we're feeding. Um, I think, again, there's so many commonalities in, in nutrition when you think about human nutrition and you think about equine nutrition and, and, and maintaining an optimal weight is, is portion control becomes really important uh, with these horses. Um, how many of you have your horses primarily on pasture in the summertime? Yep, not anymore. Yeah, Wayne has, you have had to change your entire management, I think, Wayne. And about half the time. Yep. Oh, Chris does, but she needs to supplement with hay. And that's a real important thing with pasture, too, is depending on the facility, because, again, where my horse board, my horse boards, and we're in a similar situation to Dr. Skelly. Um, they're out on pasture quite a lot, but we need to supplement with hay because the pasture um, is overtaxed. Uh, see, and that's a, and when you start looking at how are we going to control their access to that feed, um, there's lots of different things you can do, even with horses without having to keep them in a stall. Um, like Gwen is mentioning, um, she lets hers are out all, all night and they're in a dry lot during the day. Um, that limits their access to that pasture. Um, grazing muzzles, um, very effective to limit their access to to pasture. Yep, and she has a muzzle. She must be an easy keeper. Um, there's actually some kinds of puzzles, like uh, puzzle feeders that you can give them that help keep them occupied um, longer and makes takes longer to eat their feed um, or eat what they're what they're given. Um, so they you don't run into some of those secondary problems or other problems or they get bored and they're cribbing and chewing the walls and, and those sorts of things. And exercise really is a nibble net. Um, it is really an important part of this puzzle. Uh, just reducing feed alone um, is not the best way to optimize their weight. And again, that exercise needs to be um, purposeful exercise, not just a, a turnout. Because so many horses, uh, when you turn them out, don't really exercise themselves. And especially if the horses are already heavy um, or overweight, uh, back to those same reasons we talked about earlier is it's not as uncomfortable it's not as comfortable and it's a lot more effort for those overweight horses to exercise so they're going to be less likely to do so um, really important even if you have horses that are not in a non-optimal place right now to still regularly do the body condition scoring or weight estimations because it's a lot easier to make small adjustments than large um, sometimes they'll kind of and again especially i think in the winter time when it is harder for us with the hair um, we're not riding as much, they're not getting as much exercise, uh, that that weight can start to creep up on us. Um, or in cases sometimes uh, where feed becomes limited, uh, they're fed at a bin or a certain amount of hay is put out, uh, really important to keep an eye on all of your horses because sometimes the reason somebody gets a little heavy is because they're stealing food from somebody else. Um, so you may very easily run into a situation where in the same herd or the same group, uh, you have a couple horses that are a little heavier than they need to be and a couple horses that, that really need a little bit more feed. Um, and a lot of times that is actually because your, your heavier horses are more dominant um, and they're, they're taking the feed away. And so you may need to look at separating horses uh, when you're feeding feeding them to make sure everybody just gets what they need and, and not um, somebody else's. Um, and again, really important to regularly be checking this because it's easier to make an adjustment when it's a minor adjustment um, before it gets out of control um, to get your eight, your seven and a half back down to a six uh, rather than waiting until they're super obese. 
Um, and again, working with, uh, we touched a little bit on um, insulin resistance, uh, some of those issues, those health issues, really crucial to be working with a veterinarian and probably a nutritionist uh, when you're trying to address those. Uh, Wayne has provided some great hints um, in the chat box from his experience, things about looking for um, haze that are low in, in uh, soluble carbohydrates, um, some of those things. Uh, gets really complicated to try to find some of those, especially if any of you um, are in areas that have been really stricken by droughts. Um, then we see more that really has an impact on the sugars uh, that are in your hay, so you need to be aware, aware of that and, and work with a, a veterinarian, work with uh, your extension office uh, to make sure you can get your, your feed tested so you know actually what you're feeding. Um, not just um, a bale of Timothy, but what is the actual nutritional profile of, of the feed uh, that you have, of, of the hay that you have. Um, and these are just, and I think some of these, um, Dr. Skelly and um, Gwen put up in, yes, yeah, soak the hay in water to try to decrease the sugars in it. Um, put some of these links up uh, through, the ch through the chat box. Um, but just some additional resources um, if you're interested um, in getting more information about um, EMS or about body condition scoring. And I think that might bring me just to the end and to see if you have questions. Yeah, soaking can get tough when it gets um, below freezing, um, but sometimes you'll have a place in your barn that maybe doesn't get quite so cold. Um, or even in your garage or, or your back hallway um, can be um, a, a place to do that. Uh, the BCS app uh, will be available on uh, through iTunes um, is where it will, and I, I and will definitely make sure that um, all the folks that participated in this uh, webinar or registered for get for this gets get a direct email. When, when it becomes available. If you don't already get uh, MHU's newsletter, I'm sure Gwen or uh, Dr. Skilly can tell you how to get signed up for that, and we'll make sure we put announcements in that also, uh, so that when that app comes out, uh, people can have access to that. So if we don't have any more questions, uh, Gwen, do you have anything else? Uh, yes, I'll uh, bring us here a little, through a little conclusion here a second. Um, first of all, though, we'd like to thank you, Colleen, for your presentation this evening. This has been fantastic. Um, lots of interaction, love to see that, lots of fun, and uh, some great information, of course, as well. And also, we'd like to thank everyone who attended this evening. We appreciate your participation as well. Uh, we do have uh, our January webcast um, scheduled, and even though on here it says a date is to be determined, it's actually January 21st, so it's a Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., and that webcast is going to be, the title of it is Using Social Media to Enhance Your Equine Program, and during this webinar, um, Taylor uh, Fabus from Michigan State University is going to explore how you can safely use social media to enhance and expand your equine programs. Um, we also hope that, um, or we'll also be sending a survey out to everyone that attended. Um, so you'll get that survey in the next couple days. And if you could give us some feedback on that, that would be fantastic. And of course, um, you know, we'd love to have you join My Horse University and uh, eExtension Horses on Facebook and Twitter for information on our events, courses, and, and more. And once again, this webcast was re was recorded this evening and we'll be uploading it to our website by tomorrow. And so feel free to send us any comments or questions to info at myhorseuniversity.com. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone one more time. I uh, hope everyone has a fantastic night and thanks again, uh, Dr. Brady, um, for giving this presentation this evening.
had to unmute. Um, you're welcome. And Jess, I was just starting to type in, but I'll just go ahead too. If you if you don't already, uh, follow My Horse University or E Extension Horse Quest um, on Facebook. Um, that would be another way to make sure that you're aware of of not only the this new app when it comes available, but other uh, things that might help you manage your horses and have more fun with your horses. So have a good evening, everyone. Stay warm if you're someplace cold.